The movie opens up with Nara, who's the eldest daughter of a retired army general. Her family's blessed with a life of privilege, and she has everything she could wish for. However, lately, things have not been in her favor. Nara is being forced to marry a man she met just two months ago, as her parents want her to marry someone with a similar background, wealthy and privileged. To their disappointment, she flees on her wedding day to find her one and only love, Jung Yeol. Elsewhere, our hero is at a bar with his colleagues. He's absolutely shattered that his girlfriend is getting married to someone else, so he's drowning his sorrows in alcohol. While contemplating what to do next, Nara unexpectedly shows up at the bar. Her wedding dress is completely soaked from the pouring rain, but there's a huge smile on her face. Jung Yul refuses to believe that the love of his life has appeared right in front of him. It's only when Nara starts talking to him does he realize her true presence. She then gives him shit for not intervening in her wedding, and then makes him pay the taxi fare. Jung Yul admits that he wanted to ruin their wedding and elope with her and he was just about to leave when she arrived. Hearing his words, Nara spontaneously agrees to marry him. In the next scene, we see them getting married in a smaller ceremony attended only by family and close friends. They believe they've finally achieved what they've always dreamt of. However, soon the honeymoon phase is over and they start to realize that the perfect image of a happy life is far from the reality. Most of this stems from the fact that they're very busy with their jobs. Just weeks after their marriage, Jung Yul starts spending nights away from Nara because he's tired of her untidiness. This makes our heroine suspect that he's cheating on her, and the tension between the two rises so much so that they eventually decide to separate. The couple brings their case to court, and this is where all the tea gets spilled. Jung Yul is convinced Nara is sleeping with her boss. To add to his misjudgment, he's been facing disapproval from her family ever since they got married. Because he's from a less fortunate family background, Nara's wealthy parents have never accepted him as their son-in-law. Another reason that compelled Jung Yul to get a divorce is how Nara behaves at home. She's very untidy and careless at all times. The last straw for him was when she nearly caused a house fire on his qualification day as a lawyer. Our hero had to scramble back home and extinguish the flames hastily. Regardless of the divorce reasons presented before the court, the judges mandate a 30-day waiting period for the couple. This means that they will have to wait 30 agonizing days before they can get separated. Disappointed, the couple returns to their car and continue to bicker on their way to work. Nara accuses her husband of not communicating his feelings, while he says she makes everything about herself. Because the two are arguing, he fails to see a red traffic light and enters the intersection at a high speed, colliding with an oncoming truck. The impact knocks the couple out, but Nara, in her semi-conscious state, still manages to rag on him. In the next scene, Jung Yul's parents are relieved to find out that they didn't suffer any serious injuries. However, both of them have lost their memories. The doctor, Mr. Q, who turns out to be a fan of dramas, humorously compares the situation to a fictional storyline. He suggests they hit the couple on their heads to regain their memories. Jung Yul's mother, who is desperate to see her son recover, takes his advice and hits him on the head. This surprisingly has an effect on our hero's accent, but not his memory. A few days later, the matriarchs of the family decide that to help the couple get their memories back, they should live together, so they assign Nara's little sister to take care of them. One day, Jung Yul learns about a friend from his past named Gobi who he met at a local bar years ago. In a flashback, we see Gobi working as a bartender. He unintentionally became a cupid by introducing Nara to Jung Yul. He was struck by her beauty, and it was love at first sight. However, she wasn't even interested in talking to him. She ignored him brutally and shifted her attention towards her food, but as fate would have it, Nara began choking, and Jung Yul immediately came to her rescue. He rushed her to a medical center and got her treated by a doctor, but unfortunately, Nara found the doctor very attractive, and they eventually started dating. They were head over heels for one another, but there was yet another twist of fate. The doctor unexpectedly dumped her one day, leaving her heartbroken. Just when Nara thought her world was coming to an end, Jung Yul suddenly appeared again when they crossed paths at a baseball game. This time, he wasn't going to let her slip away. He protected her from the rain and impressed her with his cheesy jokes. Then, at an opportune moment, he asked her out on a date, to which she agreed. This marked the start of their relationship. Back in the present, Nara's friends are filling in some of the blanks from her past. Having learned about how she ended up marrying Jung Yul, she notes that perhaps it was his killer smile in his eyes that won her over. The following day, the couple joins a large gathering of family and friends in an attempt to jog their memory. When that fails, they resort to hypnotic therapy. Through hypnosis, the couple is able to recover parts of their past, but their memories are not as pleasant as they'd hoped. Jung Yul recalls the day of their accident, how Nara cursed him, and the qualifying exam day that changed their lives forever. However, through hypnotic therapy, the couple discovers one important thing about their past. On Jung Yul's qualifying day, Nara actually wanted to surprise him by preparing warm soup. But since she'd just returned from having a lot of drinks, she accidentally started a fire, causing havoc. 
After the session, Jung Yul apologizes to his wife, saying he should have investigated the matter first. In response, she assures him that it wasn't his fault, but just a communication issue. To regain their memories completely, their parents advise them to rejoin their workplaces. However, Jung Yul is immediately fired, as his boss doesn't think he's the right person for the job anymore. Meanwhile, Nara goes to her workplace and just wanders around until she meets the director she was rumored to have spent the night with. The director admits that they didn't become intimate, they just had drinks and worked together. He then apologizes for complicating Nara's relationship with her husband. As days pass, the couple continues living together. This leads to awkward moments with Jung Yul seeing Nara naked or catching her in her pajamas. At first, he tries to avoid her, believing it's the right thing to do. But when the encounters become frequent, he actually becomes aroused. Later, the couple visits the doctor to discuss the matter. The latter suggests they spend the night together as it may help spark some memories. However, Nara refuses to do so because she still regards Jung Yul as a stranger. When the doctor insists, she reluctantly decides to restart from the beginning. In the next scene, the couple goes on a date revisiting the same baseball stadium where they had their second encounter. Nothing significant happens there, and they end up eating lunch outside the stadium. Jung Yul tries to serve her a delicious snack, but she surprises him by offering a better one that they both enjoy. They then continue their day by going for dinner. During this, Nara unintentionally kisses him, but they quickly snap out of it, leaving them both feeling awkward. They then go to Jung Yul's friend's pub and end up getting intimate. The next day, they wake up in a very good mood and try to pretend as if nothing happened between them. However, their friends know exactly what went down last night. As the days pass, things seem to be going in the right direction for our couple. They start falling for each other again, while also regaining their memories. One day, disaster strikes. Nara's sister catches them in the act. She immediately goes blabbing to her mother, who becomes enraged at the thought that Nara and Jung Yul are getting back together. This bitch never liked her hero, nor treated him as a son-in-law. She just wanted her daughter to get her memories back as soon as possible. Realizing that the two are getting close once again, Mom decides that it's the perfect time for Nara to go abroad. Our heroine is also instructed to go to the court to settle her case. Unfortunately, as it's already been 30 days since their initial filing at court, Nara and Jung Yul are granted the divorce. With no other option, she's compelled to leave the country while Jung Yul prepares to leave the house. Before departing, he reflects on the time spent with Nara, a time that wasn't entirely good, but not entirely bad either. Later, our heroine chats with her sister and gets to learn some of the details about her marriage. She learns about all the fights, the misunderstandings, and the love they shared between them. In the next scene, as Nara prepares to depart, Jung Yul appears in front of her at the airport. He tries to express himself and apologizes for all his failures in their relationship. However, she puts on her headphones and ignores him completely. Our hero still tries to convince her to stay, but Nara interrupts him, says her goodbyes forcefully, and departs with no plans to return. In the aftermath, a heartbroken Jung Yul is comforted by his friends who have come to support him at the airport. Unbeknownst to him, Nara isn't entirely gone. In fact, she has a change of heart and decides not to leave the country. She then surprises our hero and grants him a 90-day period to recover his memory and salvage their relationship. Jung Yul is over the moon to have her back and he promises to do everything in his power to win her back. In the days that follow, the two spend most of their time rekindling their relationship. They're careful this time, as they don't want to start another argument.